We are so lucky to be joined by Chris Spanton today, who is a flower expert from England, who's going to show us exactly how to plant, grow, and maintain million bells. Thanks for joining us, Chris. My pleasure. Glad to be here, Liz. So I just got back from the nursery, and I got these three beautiful little pots of million bells. What do I do right when I get home? Okay. Right. The first thing you should do, Liz, is really you've got to look and decide what sort of container you want to use them in. With the million bells, you've got the uh, opportunity that it can go on a, on a patio, on your deck or something like that, or it can go in a hanging basket. So once you've decided that, um, you need to make sure obviously it's sound. Um, this is a good type, this is like a paper pot, it's biodegradable, it's got holes in the bottom. You can see, so there's, that's, that's for the drainage if the plant gets overwatered or there's a lot of rain around something like that so that's a key factor okay likewise if you're using a, a clay pot a real good old-fashioned thing that like in england we used to grow everything in these but plastics have overtaken it now this only has the one drainage hole in it if you can see that there so it's a little it needs what we call crops going in the bottom so you either need some stones or some broken old pots that you don't want and just place them in the bottom of the pot finally the other option is is the hanging basket uh, this is probably a 10 or 12 inch, which is a, a good size to have. Plastics with a holder, and again, if I hold it up to the, you can see there's lots of drainage holes in the bottom. So that doesn't need any crocs in it. Chris, I would like to take the million bells that I just got and place them in that pot. So what should I do? Right, um, with the plants then, um, Liz, you need to obviously check first of all that it's all clean and, and tidy, that there's no, no problems anywhere there, any damage when you brought it from home or any, any disease on it, but there's not. As you can see, Million Bells is very clean. There's a little bit there that's just broken off, so we just put that to one side, just in case that causes an issue with uh, disease later on. Um, the key thing then really is to make sure that the pot itself has had adequate moisture. So if it's dry, and you can usually tell that when you take it out of the pot, you need to give it a good drink. So I just demonstrate, I put my hands underneath on top of the pot between the, the plant, tip it upside down and then just tap it gently on, on the edge like that and then you can see the plant comes out ever so easily. Uh, and then this, as you can see, this is nice and wet, a good, a good root system there coming through, nice and white and healthy. Um, so that's what we want from there. Do you like me to hold that? Okay, thank you, that's good. So then I'll take the pot, we put this one in a, in a patio container and then we're using a, a, a standard potting compost here in America. This will be a peat with a, with a perlite included in it. The perlite is uh, used to aid drainage, so to keep the compost open and aerated as we say. And the aeration helps the root development in there. So one more time, the soil that I would use is? A standard potting compost. Okay. So filling, I put it in just like that, quite easily from my potting bench that I've previously filled, making sure it's to the top, put a little bit more in there, and then I will take the plant, thank you Liz, and then just with my hand make a hole, and then place the plant in the centre of the pot, okay, and level with the top of the compost, okay. and then replace that, that uh, soil the compost that I've, I've moved away with my hand earlier. Just holding it in place like that. Level it off, again making sure it's nice and level with the top of the pot. Now once you have this done, where should you place it in your garden? Is this in full sun? Yeah, Million Bells is, is, is very tolerant uh, of several situations. So it will take full sun and it will take partial shade. So I, I would really say partial shade is probably the, the better place for put it, particularly for the full summer months. And once you have potted it, let's talk about watering. Yeah, okay. You can see that the, the, the compost is extremely dry, um, so we need to give it a nice, a nice watering in. So get your watering can or your hose um, with a rose on the end, rather than just chuck water on it straight, straight out of the tap or whatever it is and water it over, give it a nice steady drink, allow that to drain, and then repeat the process again, okay? How often? So once that's established, then we, after the potting I'm talking here, mm -hmm. once that's established, you need, that'll probably be all right then for about a week, it depends how hot it is at the time of year. Uh, and then you would want to water it probably a couple of times a week, maybe three times. As the plant matures and grows, the root system will become more established and its demand for water and feed will increase dramatically. So um, 
at home in the garden you need to keep a real eye on that. You can clearly see when it needs um, watering because the, the, the colour of the, of the compost will change. At the moment you see it's very pale brown um, and as, as an example here in, in the other one you can see it's a real dark brown and that shows it has uh, adequate moisture on it. Okay. So when you see it changing from this colour more to this colour then it's the time to water it. Okay. Is there any other feed that I should be concerned about? Any type of fertilizer? Yeah, really, once the plant is flowering like it is now, I, I would recommend a, a high potash feed. The high potash feed gives uh, color to the blooms and encourages more blooms to keep coming through. One month later, this is what you can expect your bouquet milia bells to look like. Chris, this is just absolutely beautiful in just one month. Yes, it's stunning, Liz, isn't it? it? They rapidly do get established, given the right conditions. Nice, good fertilizer in that potting compost we used, regularly feeding, regularly watering, the correct temperature uh, and light conditions, and it just thrives, as you can see. You can see all the flowers across the top, the brilliant pink, just absolutely exactly. beautiful. And, and it's and you can see lots and lots of buds coming here that's going to give the continuous uh, flowering all through the summer months and it, with the joy with Million Bells is it, it's self-cleaning. So you really see very little debris on the plant. You can, if you do, you can find one and it, it's just there, it's just a slight dead, dead flower and that really just drops off in the rain or in the wind. You don't have to go around um, deadheading. Now let's take a look at what the Million Bells in the hanging basket looks like in just a month. Right, here we go, Liz. Here it is. There. Wow, Look just at that. one month. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. That's perfect, isn't it? Again, you can see, like the other one, lots and lots of blooms on it and uh, buds coming f all around the plant. No debris on it whatsoever. Self-cleaning again. The lovely, the lovely hanging habits of the, of, the, of the plant now starting really to come down, mm -hmm. covering the base of the basket. So if you don't like the, the sight of the basket, um, the, the flower and the foliage will, will really um, cover that and you'll just get a lovely continuous bloom. Million Bells, easy to grow, easy to maintain and would just look absolutely stunning in really any garden. That's right, such vibrant colours and such weather tolerance in it and the garden performance is absolutely outstanding in this uh, Million Bells.